a propant is a solid material, typically sand, treated sand or man-made ceramic materials, designed to keep an induced hydraulic fracture open, during or following a fracturing treatment. It is added to a frassing fluid which may vary in composition depending on the type of fracturing used, and can be gel, foam or slick water or euro-based. In addition, there may be unconventional frassing fluids. Fluids make trade-offs in such material properties as viscosity, where more viscous fluids can carry more concentrated propant. The energy or pressure demands to maintain a certain flux pump rate that will conduct the propant appropriately. pH, various rheological factors, among others. In addition, fluids may be used in low-volume well stimulation of high permeability sandstone wells to the high-volume operations such as shale gas and tight gas that use millions of gallons of water per well. Conventional wisdom has often vacillated about the relative superiority of gel, foam and slick water fluids with respect to each other, which is in turn related to propant choice. For example, Zuba, Cuscra and Sawyer found that gel-based fluids seem to achieve the best results for cold methane operations, but as of 2012, slick water treatments are more popular. Other than propant, slick water fracturing fluids are mostly water, generally 99% or more by volume, but gel-based fluids can see polymers and surfactants comprising as much as 7 vol percent, ignoring other additives. Other common additives include hydrochloric acid, friction reducers, guarantee gum, biocides, emulsion breakers, emulsifiers, 2-butoxyethanol, and radioactive tracer isotopes. Propant permeability and mesh size. Propants used should be permeable or permittive to gas under high pressures. The interstitial space between particles should be sufficiently large, yet have the mechanical strength to withstand closure stresses to hold fractures open after the fracturing pressure is withdrawn. Large mesh propants have greater permeability than small mesh propants at low closure stresses, but will mechanically fail and produce very fine particulates at high closure stresses such that smaller mesh propants overtake large mesh propants in permeability after a certain threshold stress. Though sand is a common propant, untreated sand is prone to significant fines generation. Fines generation is often measured in WT percent of initial feed. A commercial newsletter from Amentive cites untreated sand finds production to be 23.9% compared with 8.2% for lightweight ceramic and 0.5% for their product. One way to maintain an ideal mesh size while having sufficient strength is to choose propants of sufficient strength. Sand might be coated with resin, to form CRCS or PRCS. In certain situations a different propand material might be chosen altogether a Euro popular alternatives include ceramics and sintered bauxite. Propand weight and strength, increased strength often comes at a cost of increased density, which in turn demands higher flow rates, viscosities or pressures during fracturing, which translates to increased fracturing costs, both environmentally and economically. Lightweight propants conversely are designed to be lighter than sand and thus allow pumping at lower pressures or fluid velocities. Light propants are less likely to settle. Porous materials can break the strength density trend, or even afford greater gas permeability. Propant geometry is also important. Certain shapes or forms amplify stress on propant particles making them especially vulnerable to crashing. Propant deposition and post-treatment behaviors, propant mesh size also affects fracture length, propants can be bridged out if the fracture width decreases to less than twice the size of the diameter of the propant. As propants are deposited in a fracture, propants can resist further fluid flow or the flow of other propants, inhibiting further growth of the fracture. In addition, closure stresses may cause propants to reorganize or squeeze out propants, even if no fines are generated, resulting in smaller effective width of the fracture and decreased permeability. Some companies try to cause weak bonding at rest between propant particles in order to prevent such reorganization. The modeling of fluid dynamics and rheology of fracturing fluid and its carried propants is a subject of active research by the industry. Propant costs, though good propant choice positively impacts output rate and overall ultimate recovery of a well, Commercial propants are also constrained by cost. 
transport costs from supplier to site form a significant component of the cost of propants. Other components of fracturing fluids, other than propant, slick water fracturing fluids are mostly water, generally 99% or more by volume, but gel-based fluids can see polymers and surfactants comprising as much as 7 vol percent, ignoring other additives. Other common additives include hydrochloric acid, friction reducers, guarantee gum, biocides, emulsion breakers, emulsifiers, and 2-butoxyethanol. Radioactive tracer isotopes are sometimes included in the hydrofracturing fluid to determine the injection profile and location of fractures created by hydraulic fracturing. Patents describe in detail how several tracers are typically used in the same well. Wells are hydraulically fractured in different stages. Tracers with different half-lives are used for each stage. Their half-lives range from 40.2 hours to 5.27 years. Amounts per injection of radionuclide are listed in the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission guidelines. The NRC guidelines also list a wide range of radioactive materials in solid, liquid and gaseous forms that are used as field flood or enhanced oil and gas recovery study applications traces used in single and multiple wells. In the U.S., except for diesel-based additive fracturing fluids, noted by the American Environmental Protection Agency to have a higher proportion of volatile organic compounds and carcinogenic BTEX. Use of fracturing fluids in hydraulic fracturing operations was explicitly excluded from regulation under the American Clean Water Act in 2005, a legislative move that has since attracted controversy for being the product of special interests lobbying. See also, List of additives for hydraulic fracturing. References